Hello and welcome. In this on-demand video, OJM Group partner Michael Llewellyn discusses an effective strategy that can help physicians determine the optimum amount of life insurance they need to protect income and assets for their dependents. If you have more questions or want to learn how to incorporate life insurance into your financial strategy, click the link below to schedule a complimentary one-on-one -on -one consultation with one of our experienced team members. Well, thank you for joining us. Uh, today, we're going to answer the question, how much life insurance do I need? Now, for many people, and for especially if you're a high net worth earner, using general rule of thumbs may leave you overinsured or even underinsured. For our clients, we really like to solve as much as we can to get the exact amount that they actually need. And when doing that, we need to look at a few different variables. First, lump sums. So what is the amount that you're going to need to cover immediately upon death of the primary income earner? So the first and most easy one is your mortgage. Generally, we recommend for any client that they pay off for their surviving spouse, their mortgage. So that obviously can vary. That's something that we'll talk about as well too for everyone here when we look at an example, uh, but that would be one primarily. Secondly, any other debts, student loans being traditionally the most typical, but if you were to have any credit card debt or anything along those lines, you would wanna make sure that those are covered as well too. Maybe if you have an investment property and you want it to be paid off so that income goes to the surviving spouse, or if they were wanting to sell it, whatever it may be as an asset, that as well too. Uh, college expenses, that's one for children. A lot of time that's get, that gets left off. You wanna make sure, obviously we have to back into that number, but we wanna solve for that as well too, to make sure uh, that for any children, if you were wanting to cover college, it was there as well too. The second would be capital for annual income. So if you're wanting to have an income replacement for your spouse, uh, certainly you're going to want to solve for that. Now we break that up, you'll see in our example, really in three to two different phases of life. So we really want to try to account for that as much as we can. Now, estate tax would be another reason that you would need to solve for how much life insurance that you need. It's really not going to be a focus for what we're going to be talking about today. Then the other thing as well, too, that I really want to stress is should you reevaluate, meaning do you have some life insurance, but you bought it 10 years ago and your situation's drastically changed? Uh, has your income gone up? Generally, when your income goes up, your lifestyle goes up. Thus, the income replacement that you may need to replace is going up as well, too. Maybe during all of this, the housing market's been uh, crazy the last few years. Maybe you took the opportunity and you purchased a larger home. Interest rates have been very low. Maybe you have additional, you've added on some debt as well, too. Those would be some really good examples for wanting to evaluate from do you need to get some additional or revisit this issue. The other thing as well, too, is the example I kind of mentioned uh, you bought it 10 years ago, maybe the term, if you have term insurance, doesn't match up with what you need now. Maybe you bought a 20-year term, you're 10 years into it, you're 40 years old, and you still are going to need it for another past 10 years. So those are all reasons that you want to make sure that this could be a timely uh, decision for you to be reevaluating how much life insurance do you actually need. Let's look at an example. Now, this is for a 40-year-old. Uh, and again, we're solving first for what the lump sums are. Immediate burial, any expenses that would be needed, we factor in some amount there. Debt elimination, obviously this is mortgage, student loans, whatever that, whatever those are for you, we put those in there. In this example, it's 500,000. And then education fund. So this would be covering college for the kids. In this example, we've got $200,000. Now, obviously the assumption is your children may be younger, thus, you get those dollars, they're invested now. Obviously most would use 529 plans or whatever vehicle that you choose to use, but you allocate those dollars for the future expense of college. Now this is the one that can really drive up your overall need and can often get overlooked by people. So your annual income or your income replacement. And you can see here in our example, we're replacing 50 years of income. We're assuming that the primary income earner passes away at age 40 and that the spouse lives to 90. Clearly there are a lot of variables that could have an impact of what the actual need is. For this one, what we have, you can see, we break it down until children are self-supporting. 
So they have $8,000 a month and $96,000 a year. And again, remember, we're accounting for them. We'll show the variables. This is a net amount that they would be receiving. So $8,000 a month for the first 15 years. Then we lower that down to $72,000 a year for 20 years. And then the last 15 years, we lower that down to 60,000. So we go 8,000, 6,000, and then 5,000. So as you can see, if you look and we're using the capital depletion method, meaning there isn't going to be anything left in this scenario, but you can see that for each of those years, it really breaks down and drives up the cost. So you, it's you know 1.3, 1 million, and then about 500,000 to cover each of those three phases is what you would need now in life. So how do we get there? What assumptions are we using? We're just assuming a 6% rate of return. Uh, an average tax rate of 25%. Certainly that, that could vary, but if we're thinking that it would be primarily capital gains would be the tax there from that standpoint. Uh, your after-tax yields, the 4.5 and then inflation. While today, many may think that 3% uh, is too low of a number. If we look at it historically, that's actually a very reasonable number that we use there. And it gives you an expected overall yield of 1.5%. So these are the assumptions that we're making. Now, if we change them, if we made it 7% or 8% or 4%, certainly that would change what the needs are. We feel this is a pretty conservative way to approach it from an analysis standpoint to really back into the need that we want from that standpoint. So to summarize, you can see this table, the lump sum needed to cover again, burial, debt, education fund. In these examples, certainly there could be other ones for other uh, for your situation. Uh, capital needed for annual income to write at almost 2.8 million leaves us with 3.5 million of an effective need. Now, what we haven't mentioned certainly is that we want to take into account current assets. Now, this isn't necessarily the home because we don't assume that you would sell your home if something were to happen to uh, the primary income earner. But retirement accounts, uh, brokerage accounts, cash, anything along those lines that could be factored into it. And this obviously can help reduce the overall cost. So that brings it down to that 2.9 million, or we're going to call it 3 million uh, here in a minute when we look at some uh, examples from that standpoint as well. Uh, just of what the overall need is. Again, you know, I would really stress uh, for anyone that they see this and their numbers are, wow, my debt's a lot higher. Or, oh, hey, I've got five kids and I would want to cover college for, that certainly is going to play a role in what your overall coverage needs to be and may lead to a higher amount. How to address that need? Uh, again, today we're really talking about death benefit need from, you know, paying off debt, income replacement. And the way that we see that generally addressed is with term insurance. Now, if you have permanent insurance, certainly that can factor to it. And there are definitely scenarios where permanent insurance uh, could play a role and could be the better option for you. But for the most part, if we think about term insurance, you can think about it in 10, 15, 20, maybe even 30 year terms. And term insurance is sim simply the term that it's the premiums are guaranteed. So your premium is going to be X for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, or 30 years, and it's going to be fixed for that period of time. Obviously, the younger that you get it, the better off that you're going to be from that standpoint. If your death benefit is higher than uh, you would want, or the premiums come back in a 20-year term for $6 million more than you want to pay, certainly the latter term approach can be a good strategy. That's where you may be purchasing multiple policies, but for different term amounts. So a 10-year, a 15-year, 20-year, depending upon what the need is, we can back into that. That can be a way to really approve efficiency with what you need. The most typical and what we generally see are the 20 and the 30 year terms that just guarantees that premium generally uh, for the amount of time that someone's going to need from that standpoint. And if you just look at some examples here for a 40 year old at 3 million, uh, for a male, it's about 2100. For a female, it's about 1800. Certainly health plays a role. You can see this is a preferred rating. You can get a better rating than that. You can get a worse rating than that. You know, if it's worse, premiums are going to be higher. If it's better, they're going to be lower. But this is just to kind of give you an idea of, of what our example would be for someone with a 20-year term, $3 million policy. 
Again, I would just reiterate the need. If you haven't addressed your need for life insurance, we really recommend solving for it this way, where we're really trying to hone in specifically of what you need. Just because you may be a high income earner, again, those rule of thumbs may not be applicable for you and may not solve for the right death benefit amount. If you've already purchased some life insurance, and we see this often, where someone says, hey, have you addressed your need for life insurance? Oh, yeah, I bought some 10 years ago. Well, if your situation has drastically changed, it would definitely make sense to run through an exercise like this to make sure that you're properly insured. Again, if you've bought a larger home, if you've seen your expenses go up, uh, all of those things are going to drive the need for life insurance up generally. Uh, we would be happy to run this analysis for you and to be a resource for you to solve for the right amount that you need today so you're being as efficient you can with the life insurance that you need in place. OJM is a multidisciplinary wealth management firm. For nearly two decades, our firm has helped physicians across the U.S. reduce taxes, protect assets, and achieve their financial goals. OJM Group offers viewers a complimentary consultation where we can answer your questions to see if our firm might be a good fit for your situation. Simply click the button below to schedule your free consultation. We hope to speak with you soon. Thanks for watching.